Let's say you've been spending some time watching people play your favorite computer games over at Twitch TV and now you've gotten the itch to try streaming yourself. One of the first things that you will become aware of is how dependent live streaming is upon the upload speed of your internet. Looking at the helpful guidelines that Twitch provides, we see that video resolution and frame rate depend upon the bits per second that you can serve up. If you've not looked into this before, you might be surprised by how little upload bandwidth your connection has. Typically there is a large difference between the download and the upload speeds of home internet, with the download side getting the greater share of the bandwidth. For example, my AT&T 24 megabit plan only offers 3 megabits per second of upload speed. Beyond your plan specifications, it is important to know what your actual internet speeds are. I recommend DSL Report's speed test to check this out. In addition to your upload and download speeds, this speed test provides a measure of something called buffer bloat. Too much buffering of a low bandwidth connection introduces periods of very high latency and this high latency interferes with the uniformity of your connection's bandwidth. An unstable connection is the last thing you want when trying to stream a steady flow of video data. Unfortunately, the speed test reveals that my AT&T internet does not handle the upload side of the connection very well. Considerable latency develops when uploading data. The good news is that my actual bandwidth is somewhat higher than my plan specifies. I'm seeing upload speeds of around 4.5 megabits per second. Looking at the details of my test results, we see fluctuations in the latency, ranging from around 65 milliseconds to 250 milliseconds during the upload. This is why my connection gets a C grade and as it turns out this is a fairly typical result. The industry and consumers have been slow to recognize this problem so only recently are efforts being made to address it. I didn't really appreciate the significance of this problem until I tried running a test stream on Twitch. For the test I used OBS or Open Broadcast Software to create a constant bitrate stream and I configured it to use 3600 kilobits per second of bandwidth. This setting seemed to win, be within the capabilities of my connection since it is 80 percent of 4.5 megabits per second. Based on the Twitch guidelines this bitrate should be fine for producing a 720p resolution stream with a frame rate of 30 frames per second. However, the results were disappointing. OBS monitors the health of your video stream and you can view the details by bringing up the stats box found under the view menu. Twitch lets you monitor your stream health from either the dashboard or by using Twitch Inspector. Looking at the results of my 10 minute stream, we can see that there are several moments when the connection rate drops off dramatically and the video frame rate falls as well. This is simply unacceptable for an anyone trying to watch the stream. Too many frames are being dropped for someone to be able to see smooth playback of the video. There are a couple of advanced network settings for OBS. Enable new networking code and low latency mode. However, these op options are not well documented. Apparently they are experimental troubleshooting options and not necessarily intended for regular use. Nevertheless, since my connection stability was so, so poor, I thought it might be worthwhile to see what they can do. The new networking code, when enabled by itself, only might made my connection worse. However, enabling the low latency mode along with the new networking code was surprisingly helpful. My connection appeared to be completely stable. 
I consider these advanced network settings to be something of a quick and dirty fix for my network issues and I have not tested them out over a long period of time. I decided to heed the developers cautions and not rely on these settings as a complete solution to my problem. Instead I drew encouragement from the result realizing that something probably can be done to make my connection much more stable and I returned to investigating buffer bloat. Beyond the quick overview of buffer bloat at DSL reports you can also find a link to the bufferbloat.net website. On this website there is more information about what is being done to address this issue. The part of this project that seemed most interesting to me was the aspect aimed at improving home routers. Some routers are capable of running third-party firmware and new features are being added to this firmware that tackle buffer bloat. Specifically, the LEDE and the OpenWRT firmware projects include Smart Queue Management, a feature that better manages the flow of data in and out of the router. Not all routers are capable of running OpenWRT firmware so you'll have to do some research at the OpenWRT website to see which routers are supported. In the future we'll, we will see more routers that have features like Smart Queue Management included into the manufacturer's firmware. But for now, replacing the OEM firmware with OpenWRT seems to be the best option. I had an old ASUS RT N16 router on hand that I had sidelined when AT&T replaced my previous modem with their all-in-one gateway. It turned out that I could install OpenWRT on this router. The wired side of this router is well supported by the open source firmware. However, the wireless side is only partially supported. Although this is inconvenient, it isn't a big problem since I am mainly interested in trying to improve my upload connection for streaming, and I will use a wired LAN for this. The process of flashing a router to open source firmware can be a bit daunting, especially since my ASUS router has a few peculiar quirks. But the process of doing this upgrade is well documented on the OpenWRT website. Once OpenWRT is installed, you can refer to the detailed user guide for using the new firmware. Specific to our interests, the guide covers installing the SmartQ management module and configuring it to prevent buffer bloat. This part of the process turned out to be a piece of cake, which is what the buffer bloat co code is called, and it was the easiest part of the setup. One further complication that I had to deal with before I was done was how to hook up the ASUS router to my AT&T gateway. The PACE 5031NV that AT&T provided me does not allow for a true bridged mode that would fully bypass the internal router. Instead one needs to set the gateway to use DMZ plus mode. It is not uncommon for AT&T customers to want to substitute their own router for the gateway's internal one, so there is plenty of information about how to do this on the internet, including on AT&T's own forums. Once you have the new firmware installed and the SQM package running, you can return to DSL reports to rerun re their speed test and use the results to tune the SQM settings. With the speed test results indicating that buffer bloat is no longer a problem for me, the question remains whether this will improve my ability to use the connection for streaming. While the sub subsequent test stream started out with a warning that it was unstable, this soon corrected itself, and as the Twitch Inspector graph shows, the connection is now quite stable. A total of only 27 frames were dropped during the 10 minute test stream. The graph shows a couple of slight dips in the frame rate of the video, but these appear to be minor issues. I would rate the quality of this stream as good enough. 
more bandwidth, for example, a 4,000 to 5,000 kilobit per second stream would give the video more detail, but the current level of quality is acceptable according to Twitch's guidelines. My discussion of semi-technical issues tends to get a little long-winded and maybe a bit distracted by details, but I hope the main points are not lost in the process. Buffer bloat is a real network phenomenon and it does have real consequences that are apparent when you're trying to make the most of your internet connection. The less bandwidth that you have to work with, the more likely it, it is that you will see these effects. There is an ongoing project to get software features included into the firmware of home routers that mitigates this buffer bloat problem. And this new network code does indeed appear to be an effective.